My name is Helge Ronstad and I'm uh, from a band called The Fluffy Jackets. I'm here today to talk a bit about um, one of my prized possessions in life. This fabulous Gibson Flying V from 1975. I was lucky to get hold of this guitar from a friend of mine, I like to call him a friend, called Manny Charlton from the band Nazareth. This is just a famous and fabulous rock and roll machine to have. It's just. Uh, has an amazing history. It, it features on two of my all-time favorite Nazareth records, one called Expect No Mercy from 1977 and one called Playing the Game from 1976. You could hear this guitar on those recordings on, again, some of my favorite tunes, uh, Kentucky Fried Blues and Flying, Down Home Girl. So this guitar has been around the block with uh, Nazareth and it's been toured quite extensively in the 1970s. Manny actually retired his guitar from the road around 1980. For him it was a very dear uh, possession. He kept well care of it for over 40 years. I got it earlier this year and it's, um, I think Manny saw me drooling at this guitar when I was over in his home studio and uh, when he came to sort of part with it, I think he wanted it to go to a good home and uh, I'll do my best to look after it, obviously, as well as I can. I thought today it might be a good, good thing to show you some of the features with this guitar. Because it's a very custom uh, guitar, it's built by one of the UK's most famous luthiers called John Birch. He used to customize guitars for uh, Brian May of Queen, uh, Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath, uh, for Slade, uh, Roy Orbison and lots of guitarists in the 1970s. And the, the custom job, as you see, it has like a, the most obvious thing, it has like a metal scratch plate, which also looks good from a stadium point of view, you can sort of reflect light quite easy. And also uh, it has like a custom switch here. I'll play the guitar for you as well, so you can hear what it sounds like. But, but basically this uh, face switch, which uh, Jim Birch added to the guitar, when the pickup selector is in the middle selection, uh, it, it sort of uh, allows these uh, pickups to work against each other. So it, it sort of creates like a, a natural scooped sound, which is quite distinctive. So um, it, it's quite useful for uh, when you're playing live. So you play. <laughs> Put on his face switch. So it's, it's just much more. And what, what I find it does is um, it allows uh, a lot of uh, harmonics to pop out of the guitar all around the neck, you know, like so it's, it's just what I found difficult with my old guitar was like, how do the guitarist make this sort of pitch harmonic sounds that's cool, like a. So that's so easy with this guitar. It's like it's like opening in a Pandora's jukebox of playing. It's like a and it just makes the whole sort of playing experience so much more enjoyable. So I can sit in my room so for days on end, try to get perfect my pitch harmonics on this guitar. Um, so so that was what the 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 this. Um, this face switch does. And uh, talking about pickups, these pickups are super uh, distortion pickups from DiMarzio, which is quite famous. Uh, you know, for all, most um, guitarists um, from the 70s, they, they used these ones because they have like a very high output. And before uh, Gibson or Fender or anybody came on the scene, DiMarzio re realized that people need more sort of volume output and more distortion, so they created these ones. And yeah, again, Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath, David Gilmour, uh, you know, Brian May, they, they all used this, uh, these pickups, Ace Freely, you know, all the big 70s bands, you use them, Jerry Garcia, Grateful Dead and everything. So, so it's, um, it sounds cool. And um, other, uh, this, you know, the traditional Gibson stop 
bar tailpiece here is, is uh, exchanged in for favor of this locking tuner system, which was on Manny's uh, request uh, because he wanted it to stay in tune. And uh, a small tidbit is, is uh, also the uh, shallower um, locking, uh, uh, well, not locking, but sort of machine heads up here. It's made by a German manufacturer, which is quite, quite you know, high end for for luthiers to use. Yeah. Um, other than that, it has a lot of scratch marks, dings, uh, all part of the history of the touring with Nazareth, and uh, it makes the guitar even more special for me. Obviously, being a Nazareth fan. Uh, other things to say about the guitar is, uh, yeah, how did I? end up with it, uh, is, might be a question, is uh, uh, I played, or still play in a band called the Fluffy Jackets, and we are, uh, uh, actually at the moment we're sitting in the rehearsal studios, um, and uh, we're rehearsing for the new album. Uh, the previous album, Manny Charlton played on, and he, uh, we, we got to know each other, and I was over at his house, and he saw me drooling at this guitar, and um, I sort of, couldn't get my eyes away from it at the time. I remember I didn't dare sort of even touch it because I was afraid of sort of dropping it, you know. This is, oh no, it's, it's, this is guitar. And he told me a story about it. And uh, it's, it's one of my most treasured possessions, as you can imagine, as a Nazareth freak and fan. And uh, he, uh, when he, uh, he sold it to me, he, uh, he wrote a little message here and a little uh, signature, fly on Helge. So it's very special for me, obviously, to have. And uh, hopefully we're going to do some more stuff with Manny in the future. But in the meantime, we get to play around with this excellent piece of equipment. So lucky me. And uh, that's basically the story of the guitar as I, uh, I know it. <laughs>